Good evening everyone, my name is Benjamin, and today I want to talk about something a little bit lighter in heart um, than uh, some of it, quite a decent amount of the content that I've discussed on this channel before. So, I'm going to be talking about uh, state capitals in the colonial period. This is kind of part of the political series about the history of the United States, uh, the, the political history of the United States. Um, so I guess we'll talk about this in some different ways. By the way, uh, Vermont was disputed between New York, New Hampshire, and Vermonters. <laughs> Um, I guess we'll st actually start in New England with Massachusetts. And Massachusetts had two parts. One gigantic non-contiguous part and the rest of the state that we currently know as Massachusetts. Now, Massachusetts, their capital is Boston and it has always been Boston. And they actually, as you'll find, they're kind of the exception, New England. Uh, New Englanders have mostly kept their capitals, as far as I can tell, they have kept their capitals in the same places. And that uh, they're one of the few places that hasn't changed the location of their state capital. And there's actually some very good reasons for that. Uh, for a lot of the states changing their capitals. And I'll get, actually, technically I need to move this again, though, even though it's not really in uh, the current. We'll talk, we'll talk about Georgia, because Georgia's weird when it comes to their state capitals. But... Yeah, so New Hampshire, they've all mostly always kept their capital in Concord. And Providence has pretty much always been the capital of Rhode Island. Hartford has pretty much always been the capital of Connecticut, except for a time when it shared duties with New Haven. And now we move to the first state that... Actually, I forgot one state. Um, hmm. Awkward. Give me just a second. That way I can make sure I get this correct. Uh huh. Ah, gotcha. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I get the county right there. Okay, I think it looks like it's there. Yeah, I guess I have to lighten it up a little bit. And then the modern capital is Trenton. And let me just make sure I get the correct location for Trenton. Yeah. I figured it was that one. All right. All right. So... New York changed its capital. Its colonial capital was New York City. Which, by the way, the city and the state were named at roughly the same time, and neither was named for the other. Um, and actually, the original name for New York City was New Amsterdam. And, of course, it consists of the five boroughs. Staten Island. The Bronx. Manhattan, Queens, and, oh, I should know this, oh, I should know this, <sighs> St. 
Staten Island, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan. Brooklyn. And of course in New York, each borough is its own county. But they moved their capital to Albany. Now, the interesting thing about this is the reason why they did <clears throat> and it was because a lot of people in the post-revolution era, the the area, the time frame, the 10, 15, 20 years after the American Revolution, they were concerned about, you know, taxation without representation or legislation without representation. And the governments of each of these states, they wanted to preserve some of their legitimacy. And so what they did was they decided that they would move the capitals closer to these rural populations. And of course, America was much more rural back then. Yes, urban populations, you know, urban core still had a lot of people, but it was actually a lot more balanced and there was probably arguably more people outside of the cities than there were inside of the major cities. So it actually did make sense to put them in a more central, the state capitals in a more central location relative to where the population was. And after the census, this became a lot easier to do. And so what you wound up have ha so what wound up happening is that New York decided that an area that was more central to their population was actually Albany. Uh, Boston was actually a, one of the exceptions to the rule. Uh, the center of population in colonial Massachusetts was actually closer to Springfield and this kind of area because it just was. Now Boston is definitely the center. And you can see this trend happen where, for example, Elizabethtown was the colonial capital of New Jersey. They moved it to Trenton, which, by the way, there was a very famous Revolutionary War battle that happened in Trenton. Philadelphia. Guess what? Philadelphia used to be, it was the colonial capital of Pennsylvania. That moved to Harrisonburg for the exact same reason. Actually, hilariously, you can make a decent argument that maybe the current cap... Well, actually, no. Harrisonburg's in a reasonable spot to be the state capital even nowadays. Whereas you could argue New York City should probably be the capital of New York again. At least if you're talking about proximity to the majority of the population. I think well over 60% of New York's population lives you know, south and east of this line. It's kind of scary. Um, a lot of places hell, were used as capitals in Delaware, uh, including Wilmington, um, but Dover was eventually settled on here in this middle county. Uh, we go to Maryland, and I think the capital has pretty much always been it's another one that I kind of screwed up. The capital has always been kind of in this general area. I think Baltimore maybe was the colonial capital, but uh, Annapolis is the current capital. By the way, you'll notice that I have the District of Columbia right here filled in as part of Maryland. That's because... The District of Columbia used to have two parts. And you can actually see this by looking at Virginia. And there's a tiny little bit of, I want to say this is Alexandria. One of these is Alexandria. So this is Fairfax County. This is Fairfax City. This is Alexandria. This is Falls Church. 
trying to remember what this city is called, what this independent city is called. Or maybe I got that. I know this is Falls Church. I want to say... Whatever. Point remains that DC used to be uh, part split between Maryland and Virginia. It's a square on the Potomac. And speaking of Virginia, we have to talk about uh, colonial state maps. Uh, a lot of states, actually. Pennsylvania, you could argue... You could draw Pennsylvania like Oop. you could draw Pennsylvania like this. Though New York would claim a lot, Connecticut claimed some, Massachusetts claimed some. However, in the South, it is a lot easier for us to truly be able to determine the claims. Number one, because we have geography on our side. Number two, because they actually were already setting up colonial, uh, setting up governments, county governments in these areas. And because, well, it's a little bit easier because the natural boundaries are and the determined boundaries are a little bit easier to see. They were much better mapped out in this area, which is a little bit strange, but also not really. Now, Kentucky was first uh, crossed into by Daniel Boone and uh, also Tennessee area as well uh, through the Cumberland Gap. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about that at some point. But um, Virginia basically claimed from this line all the way to the Mississippi River. Now, you'll notice that this little part, that this was actually a surveying error. Because it's extremely difficult, it turns out, to draw a perfectly straight line from this point in the Outer Banks and, you know, the Virginia Beach area. It turns out it's very difficult to draw a perfectly straight line from here all the way to the Mississippi River. And you'll also notice this little blip in Tennessee as well near uh, Abingdon and Bristol. But the colonial capital of Virginia was Williamsburg, which is actually very close to Jamestown, as we discussed. Here's Jamestown. Here's where Williamsburg is. And actually, Colonial Williamsburg is a place you really do need to go. And why was it located here? Well, number one, when the colony was first being um, settled, this was very central because most people were living far enough up these very wide estuaries of many rivers. Technically, the rivers extend all the way here, but they're very brackish in this area. Um, but they would live very far up these rivers and far away from you know their mouths in the Chesapeake because they were fearful of Spanish attacks. That's why Jamestown was so far up river. Anyway, so eventually turned out that population had moved more westward, kind of into this Piedmont area. And if just to kind of highlight it was very much, you know, that was where colonial Virginia kind of started to reach the true hinterlands. But these areas into this area was starting to get settled.
And that actually includes what would eventually become Charlottesville up here. Though there's also an old trail, an old road, and you can actually see the remnants of that if you look at where certain independent cities are in Virginia. This was, you could actually push the line I had just drawn back a little bit further and go here. This was an old trail that existed in the colonies. You'll notice all the independent cities, Bristol, this is uh, Radford, Salem, Roanoke, uh, Stanton, uh, Harrison, sorry, actually it's, yeah, it is Harrison, um, Winchester, a few others. And the reason why they're all along this is because of colonial settle, you know, settlements that existed kind of in that area. And that's also why all these counties form a very, very neat line, counties and cities. And that's why they're, you know, right where they are. But because population had moved more west and more north, Virginia needed a new capital, or at least their politicians thought they needed a new capital to reflect that. So they built Richmond, which was more central to the population than geographically central. Otherwise, Charlottesville would actually make a very good choice. <laughs> but I'm not sure if Thomas Jefferson thought himself important enough to have that. Um, now moving down to North Carolina, I forget the exact name of what their colonial state capital was, but it's kind of not important because Raleigh was established very quickly, um, and switched over to, switched to very quickly after the American Revolution. So it's a little bit less important in terms of colonial state capitals. Also, North Carolina was not settled as quickly as some other places. Uh, then we go to South Carolina, where Charleston was a colonial capital and probably still arguably a more important city in terms of South Carolina's history, even after Columbia became the capital. And again, it, this was another case of moving it to a more central location in order to better represent or better be located to the population, and Columbia is still relatively close to the center of population in South Carolina, but yeah, South Carolina does get more populated the close, the, the higher up in elevation you get because of the weird way the fall line works, and I may talk a little bit about the fall line, but the reality is it, it definitely determines where people are going to live in this, especially in the south and we move to our last state also by the way uh, South Carolina did technically claim a section all the way to the Mississippi but that was a very tenuous claim North Carolina also claimed Tennessee I may actually tell the weird and wacky story of how Georgia lost Alabama and Mississippi and also, by the way, this part was always a tenuous claim. But Georgia claimed basically everything up to the Mississippi. Um, so yeah, Savannah was the colonial capital. And Georgia was definitely the least populated uh, of the colonies and later states. Or it may, even if it wasn't the least, it was very low populated compared to what it is today. Um, even given the era, it was... And that's because, as a colony, it was founded in 1732. And... <clears throat> now, Savannah had been around for a decent amount of... Now, but come the American Revolution, Savannah had been around for a decent amount of time but the population had 
as the story goes in other places, moved more inland. And we'll eventually talk about the weirdness. But after the revolution, it was determined that Georgia needed a new capital that wasn't on the coast. Yes, Savannah is a beautiful city and it's a major port and but the British did capture it and hold it for the vast majority of the war. So they moved the capital to Louisville and that's the way you say it if you're a local from the town. And that was to be better centralized to the new population. But they quickly realized that they made a slight error and that it wasn't quite as central as they wanted it to be relative to the population of the state. So they moved it to Milledgeville, which is just a few counties over. And that was the capital of Georgia all the way up to 1868 when they finally moved it to uh, where the capital is now in Atlanta. And part of it was because they had to rebuild Atlanta anyway. Atlanta was still a major population center. And they figured, well, we may as well put the capital here and see how it goes. And they've stuck with it ever since. Of course, you could say Georgia is changing state capitals like they changed their state flag, and we may talk about that one, but oh boy. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a brief history. Um, as we all know, um, of the states that don't, if I remember correctly, Jackson, Mississippi is, I want to say that county, but it's in one of those two. Uh, Nashville, the capital of Tennessee, is here, and what's the capital of Kentucky, everybody, in the comments? Uh, is it, how do you say it? Do you say Louisville or Louisville? Or do you say it as the natives say it? Louisville. Well, if you said either, you're wrong, it's Frankfurt. And I forget which county it's in. Uh, Charleston, West Virginia is in Kanawha County. And I'm trying to remember which one. How do I... I'm trying to remember which one. Go through Tazewell. I want to say it's this one. And everybody knows that the capital of Maine is Portland, which is uh, right kind of in this general vicinity, if I remember correctly. I do know it's one of those uh, five. But anyway, that's about it for today. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Likes, comments, subscriptions, they always do help, and I greatly appreciate them. And, uh, yeah, have a very nice evening.